Hi, and welcome to this presentation on the history of Europe. My name is Adam, and I'll be your teacher. I'll begin right away. This is Europe now. The year is 2014. With reservation for opinions on the statuses of Kosovo and Crimea, this is how most of us look at Europe. This is simply what Europe is. The thing is though, that Europe has only looked like this for about five years. Before that, it's never once had these particular borders. It's always been changing. Consider the implications. This is what we think Europe is supposed to look like. But it has never before looked like this. I'm going to redraw this map of Europe. I'm going to change it all the way back to what it looked like in 1914, when the Great War broke out. By showing you how much has changed, I'm hoping to show you how different Europe was just a hundred years ago. It was a completely different world. Because we simply can't look at the First World War through the lens of today's Europe. We need to see it as it really was. Are you ready? The first thing we're going to do is to get rid of Iceland. Iceland was not an independent country in 1914. It belonged to Denmark, just like the Faroe Islands and Greenland still do today. Second thing, Ireland. Away it goes. At this point, all of Ireland is still part of the United Kingdom. Finland is a part of Russia. And the same goes for Estonia and Latvia. Next up, we have that little piece of Russia in between Poland and Lithuania. We give a piece of Lithuania to it. And then we hand it over to Germany. And then we give Lithuania to Russia. And Belarus. And Kazakhstan. And Georgia. And Armenia. And Azerbaijan. All Russia. You think Russia's big now. You've clearly never been to 1914. After this, we're gonna mash two countries together to recreate one of the old European powerhouses. I'm talking, of course, of Austria-Hungary. To this new old country, we add Slovakia, the Czech Republic, Slovenia, Croatia, and Bosnia. So it's kind of interesting, right? We tend to think of Austria as some small little mountain place where there isn't much action. And then we get this, a great power, the size of France. And we're not even done with it yet. Anyway, moving on, moving south. In the Mediterranean, Malta belongs to the British, as does Cyprus, which is the reason they still have British military bases there today. Egypt is also British, although it's kind of hard to see on the map because there's only a tiny fragment of it. Just take my word for it. Another change in the Mediterranean is in Greece. See the Greek islands to the southeast? They're called the Dodecanese, and at this time, they actually belong to Italy. In North Africa, Tunisia is a French colony, as is Algeria. The northern part of Morocco is part of Spain, and the rest of it, of France. Okay, let's move north again. Look at Denmark. The southern part of continental Denmark belongs to Germany, as does a small eastern part of Belgium. Two provinces of eastern France were also German at this time, and one of the main reasons France really didn't like Germany. The people there actually spoke German, but the provinces had been French until recently, and France wanted them back real bad. Another important change to a major western country is in northern Italy, where a sizable chunk of land belonged to Austria-Hungary. Okay, now, let's get rid of Poland. Getting rid of Poland has been a favorite activity for many of its historical neighbors, so we'll jump on the bandwagon too. Most of present-day Poland was part of Germany, and more than half of this area actually had a majority of Germans living there. A smaller part to the south belonged to Austria-Hungary. The rest was part of Russia. For good measure, let's get rid of Ukraine too. We'll give the southwestern part to Austria-Hungary, and the rest, yeah, to Russia. Russia never really gets enough, so we'll give it Moldova too. Now. Austria-Hungary has a really weird shape, and we'll try to fix that by giving it about half of Romania. In this area, there are many people who speak German and Hungarian, so it's not the worst fit ever, I suppose. And, by looking at the map now, I think you can kind of see what's coming. Yep, sorry Serbia. 
before getting back to Serbia, will adjust Montenegro ever so slightly, not a huge difference in perspective. So, as for Serbia, we're about to compensate it with most of Kosovo and with Macedonia. To even things out a bit, we'll give away some parts along the eastern border to Bulgaria. And from Bulgaria, we take away a piece in the north and give it to Romania. I suppose they could use some consolation after what we did to them. To compensate Bulgaria, we give it a part of Greece and a new coastline. And by that, we're done in the Balkans. Sorry, Greece. We're moving on to the Middle East, where some changes are going to have to be made. First of all, we're cutting off a large chunk of desert there in the corner. This is actually no man's land. That's right, a hundred years ago, and more than half of today's Saudi Arabia belongs to no state at all. It's just there. The rest is easier. It's Turkish, or Ottoman, whichever you prefer. That means no Syria, no Iraq, no Lebanon, no Israel or Palestine, no Jordan or Saudi Arabia leftovers, just the Ottoman Empire. And with that, we might have been done. But no, Russia still wants more. That little strip of land in northeastern Turkey is Russian in this time, so let's hand it over. Now we're done. This is Europe 1914. This is 100 years ago. Four generations and everything is upside down. Would you have believed it? Let's do a quick comparison with today. Only seven countries are unchanged and 34 have been completely erased off the map. That's huge. Now, I want you to step back a bit and ponder the enormous changes that have occurred and ask yourself, how different will Europe look a hundred years from today? Thank you for watching.